Hey, we need an extra Thunderbird pilot. Jump in this F-16. Hop in. But sir. I said hop in. What up, Jet Team? Ryan here. Welcome back to the channel. I've missed you. If you haven't been here before, I'm a former F-15 E combat fighter pilot, F-16 Thunderbird pilot, and current commercial pilot. And I use that experience to break down epic aviation videos, stories, and subjects that you can send to me on Instagram. And on the daily, I get asked, Ryan, what does it take to become an Air Force pilot? So this is your one-stop shop, your keys to the castle on how you can make that happen. Now you can one day walk across that stage and be handed a shiny silver pair of wings with a radiator in the middle. And even if you don't want to be a pilot, I think you'll enjoy seeing the process that elite pilots and aviators have to go through. But if at the end of this, you're obsessed with going Mach 2 at 50,000 feet, in an SR-72. That's on you, I'm sorry, I can't be held responsible for that. <laughs> and stay to the very end of this video because I'll give three keys to success that I think helped me along the way and ultimately helped me become a Thunderbird pilot. Before we get going, if you would, just <laughs> download that like button for me and maybe even subscribe. Every time you like and subscribe, a pilot somewhere gets their wings. And who knows, one day that pilot could be you. So right off the bat, it comes down to fundamentals. It's not like on day one of undergraduate pilot training, they walk in and they're like, hey, we need an extra Thunderbird pilot. Jump in this F-16 and fly the demonstration. <laughs> could you imagine? No, it's a building block approach and the Air Force does a really good job of helping you step through that process in the time that makes sense. So I want to remove any intimidation right off the bat that you have to have all this figured out. Don't psych yourself out before you even get started. You've got to get a college degree, but whoa, whoa, hey, where are you going? Come on, come on back. No, you don't have to get an engineering degree and you don't have to be great at math and science. If you don't want to do engineering, you don't have to. You can, but you can also get a non-technical degree. That's what I did. I ended up getting a degree in film production. And I know what you're saying. You're like, oof, you got a degree in film production? Shouldn't these videos be a little better? Everybody's a critic. <laughs> Next, you gotta be between the ages of 18 and 33, and you have to be able to get a top secret security clearance so you can't have anything crazy on your record. And a story I'll tell you is, I remember one day before going and flying the F-15E for the first time with my Wizzo, was the instructor who was giving us a walk around of the jet said, wow, in one day, you guys are gonna be given the keys to an $80 million national treasure. So with great power comes great responsibility. Hmm, I don't know where I heard that before. And then don't worry, you don't have to have any prior flight experience. The Air Force will basically set you up with that building block approach and will help you step through the process. One thing I would say is if you have the opportunity and this isn't required at all, if you can get a scholarship or some other way to jump up in a Cessna with an instructor for one or two flights, it'll just help you understand you know, what you think about being up there because as a military aviator, you're going to be in an aircraft a lot. So maybe right off the bat, it's nice to know, oh yeah, this is definitely what I wanna do and dedicate my life to, or you know what, I'm gonna go a different route. And figuring that out early is awesome. Next, you gotta be in relatively good health and you have to be physically fit. So before every flight, we would do 100 pull-ups. Yeah. <laughs> Could you imagine everybody's like, 99, 100, yes, I can go fly. <laughs> so nothing crazy like that, but you have to be able to pass certain physical standards and then you go through a military physical. But don't worry, there's waivers for so many things. So I always tell people, don't disqualify yourself before you've even tried. And then you have to have vision that's correctable to 2020. And again, there's waivers for so many things, so don't stress yourself out. And the three options to help you become a lieutenant is first of all, going to the Air Force Academy, which is like 24 seven military life. Then there's ROTC, which is one to two times a week where you study military theory and you learn about what it's gonna be like to be a military officer. And then there's OTS, which is when you already have a college degree. There's also options out there if you're enlisted in the Air Force already. So you gotta just choose which of those paths 
works best for you and which one you think you'll be the most successful in. And then in between your junior and senior year, you're gonna be asked what you wanna do in the Air Force. So you're gonna say, I wanna be a pilot. And then you're gonna be racked and stacked and ranked among your classmates to see who's done the best throughout the different programs. It's a meritocracy, so it really comes down to who's best suited and most skilled for the position of becoming a pilot. And you're gonna do two different tests. One of them's called an AFOQT, and it's just a fancy way of saying the Air Force's SAT or ACT and there's actually a specific part of that which is pilot and navigator and there's books out there you can get to study for this like you would an ACT or SAT so I highly recommend that. And then you're going to do what's called the TBAS, the test for basic aviation skills and this isn't necessarily something you can study for it's just a lot of spatial recognition and recognizing different shapes and things that you might do once you're in that cockpit. And then the Air Force is gonna send you to IFT. It's in Pueblo, Colorado, and it stands for Initial Flight Training. You're gonna fly DA-20s, which are these cool little light airplanes, and that's where you'll start building the skills to become a military pilot. And from there, you're gonna to go to undergraduate pilot training, which is where the rubber really meets the road. And that is the T6 is what you'll start in. The different bases for that are Columbus, Mississippi, Laughlin, Texas, Shepard, Texas, and Vance, Oklahoma. Shepard Air Force Base is where I had the opportunity to go, and that is Euronado Joint Jet pilot training in Jept. And there we focused on training fighter pilots from the NATO Alliance. The academics portion is what you'll do first at UPT, and that's about six weeks. Next, you're gonna step into the T6, which is around 22 weeks. And then from there, you're gonna track. So you're either gonna go on a taker track, a cargo track, which you're gonna go to fly the T1 afterwards, or you're gonna go on the fighter pilot track where you'll fly the T-38, or you could go on the helicopter track, which means you're gonna go fly Hueys. And that last portion lasts about 24 weeks, and then at which point you'll go to your individual bases to learn how to fly specific aircraft. If you are gonna go be a fighter pilot, there's something called IFF, Introduction to Fighter Fundamentals, which I'll cover in another video. This will be a three-part series where this one's how to become a pilot, and there's gonna be two more that I'm gonna release that will be how to become a fighter pilot and how to become a Thunderbird pilot. So definitely check those videos out after this one. And again, it's a meritocracy, so you're gonna get racked and stacked against your classmates to determine which track you're gonna go down. So at the end of the day, be someone that people can depend on, work extremely hard, and ultimately let your flying speak for itself. And next I'll tell you about essentially a hack. So there's a way for you to know which plane you're gonna fly prior to even going to undergraduate pilot training. And that is if you get a spot with a reserve unit or an Air National Guard unit flying that specific aircraft. So let's say, for example, you wanted to fly the A-10 at Gowan Air Force Base in Boise, Idaho. You would essentially go up to that unit, you would apply, and then if you get selected, you'll go to pilot training already knowing which jet you're going to fly. And I remember those guys and gals in my pilot training classes where I was like sweating, like, I got to get a fighter, I got to get a fighter. They were like, oh yeah, I'm going to the F-16, no big deal. Uh, so like, that was awesome. I was super happy for them. But yeah, definitely look into the reserves and the Air National Guard. So now you've made it to the end of the video and I'm a man of my word. So I'm gonna give you those three pro tips on how I think you could be extremely successful throughout this process. The first one is probably pretty obvious and that is to just work extremely hard hard. You're going to have to put in long hours in undergraduate pilot training to do the things that you're going to be asked to do. So never slack on that. Always put your best foot forward and be willing to be the hardest worker in the room. And the second pro tip I'll give you is definitely work with others and work with your flight mates. Definitely study on your own, but also study together and get to know each other because there's the potential to make lifelong friends. And the third pro tip is play hard. Play soccer, play football, go out and do things to relieve stress with with your flight mates because at the end of the day you have the potential to make lifelong friends and if you can blow off some stress and be a little bit calmer under pressure it's only gonna help and the last bonus tip i'll give you and this is something that i think helped me be successful throughout all the different training programs that ultimately helped me to become a thunderbird pilot was be the person that people can depend on and the person that people want around I mean, do you want to get to those goals having stepped on people's throats and have no one like you? Like, that's not a way to enjoy your career as a pilot. Ultimately, if you can be someone who can be depended on, who people just want around, your experience is going to be better. And ultimately, those are the people that I saw 
get the jets that they wanted to fly and get promoted the fastest. Because at the end of the day, we're all in this together. It's not about one single individual. A flight is usually made up of four when it came to flying fighter jets. On the Thunderbirds, we were a team of eight jets that would fly to every location. And there was 200 plus people helping us get those jets to where they were going. So remember, this is not just a job. This is your reputation. This is your life. And this is something that if you focus on it, you put in the hard work, you put in the long hours, and you take care of the people around you, it'll be an incredibly satisfying experience. I'm so excited for you and your journey. Let me know below what you are going to do today to help yourself become a pilot or what you thought of this process. Before we get going, if you would, just dominate that like button for me. Thank you so much for being here. It really means a lot. Hit me up on Instagram if you have any other questions that you would like to ask. Most of all, have a great day.